What's up guys, Zach at ECS Tuning, and today we're gonna to show you how to remove the stock intake from your Mark V GTI and replace it with our in-house engineered Luftechnik intake system. Let's go check it out. In addition to our standard tool kit, we're gonna be using our Schwaben VAG connector removal tool, a 12.24 millimeter socket, and our Schwaben hose clamp pliers. All right, here we've got our Mark V GTI with the FSI engine, and you can see that Volkswagen decided to route the intake through the engine cover, which is kind of goofy, so we're going to remove it. Uh, we're going to start by removing all the stock components. Uh, so first, we're going to take our Schwab and hose clamp pliers and remove this hose clamp. Okay, now we're going to remove these two T25 screws. Okay, so next we're going to disconnect our mass airflow sensor and the turbo inlet pipe. For the mass airflow sensor, we're going to use our VAG connector removal tool. Just stick it in there like that, push forward, pull back, no problem. And for the turbo inlet pipe, we're going to take this flathead screwdriver and pry against these retaining clips at the front and the back of the pipe. Now, that should come off pretty easily. A little bit of force, no problem. Okay, so now we're ready to remove the engine cover, and the trick to that is knowing where it's mounted. There are four rubber grommets at each corner of the engine cover. So what you want to do is get your hand as close to those, those grommets as possible and pry up from there so you don't break the engine cover. I like to stick my hand in the intake track for the rear two and just pull up. All right, once you've got your engine cover removed, you'll want to check the four post locations to make sure you didn't leave any grommets behind. Once you've done that, we're ready to take the turbo inlet pipe off. Right, it's just a hose clamp, so a seven millimeter socket on your quarter inch drive, drive ratchet, and you should be able to get it off pretty easily. Once you've got it loosened, you should be able to pull it right straight up, like that. All right, so now we're ready to remove the last component of the stock intake system, which is this little snorkel piece here. Uh, it's held on by two T25 screws on either side, so you just get in and get them out. All right, so we're ready to start installing our new intake. Uh, the first thing we're going to install is this heat shield. Uh, it goes to the back of the engine and is held in place by the two posts that the grommets for your engine cover sit on. Uh, so that's the 12.24 the millimeter socket we talked about earlier. It shouldn't be too tight. Should be able to get them by hand. Okay, so you'll take your heat shield, which helps to keep the, the heat that your turbo is producing contained, and you line it like so and put the same posts back in place. I'm just going to put them in hand tight for now. Okay, so next we're gonna install our turbo inlet pipe. Uh, to do that, you'll take one of your 50 to 70 millimeter hose clamps and put it on the turbo inlet pipe. I like to kind of choke it up so that it's stuck to it so that you don't have to worry about it falling off. And you get it on the turbo and push down until it's fully seated, which I can see that it is, so we're okay. Now we'll pull the hose clamp down and just snug it up. All right, next we're ready to install the upper intake pipe. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab a 70 to 90 millimeter hose clamp and throw it on the turbo inlet pipe. Next, you'll notice that your new intake came with two of these grommets, which look very similar to the ones that came out of your engine cover. So you'll take one and stick it through this tab, make sure it seats fully, and that'll go on the, uh, on the right post that your engine cover did use. So now you wanna stick the tube into the turbo inlet pipe, taking care to align that grommet with this post. There's a little bit of room for, for movement in that tab so you can get it just right. And then pop it down on, no problem. Okay, so now we're gonna install our flex coupler. Uh, I've already put two 70 to 90 millimeter hose clamps on it and I'm just gonna slide it onto the upper intake tube 
and we'll leave that there and I'm gonna grab the heat shield and we're gonna install that next. Okay, so here we've got our heat shield. Uh, we're gonna install another grommet like you would have found on your engine cover into this tab. That'll mount the, the heat shield on this post and we've gotta get these tabs under the radiator shroud. So you gotta install it in kind of a tricky manner to get everything to go. You can get a little bit more room if you remove your battery box, but I think we'll be able to get away with it. So if you, if you kind of tuck it in like this, and then tip it down. And then you just find the right spot. Okay, so the heat shield's currently set in place, so we're gonna install the lower intake tube. Insert it through the hole in the heat shield first, and then twist the mounting tab down toward its mounting location. Kind of wiggle it into place. I just got done tightening the hardware for the lower intake tube. It mounts down here with a rubber isolator and two T25 screws at the front of the heat shield. So now we're ready to install our air filter. With everything in place, now we're ready to start making our final adjustments and tweaking things to get our fitment perfect. Uh, you'll tighten up your hose clamps and anything that we left loose from earlier. Now that everything's tightened up, uh, we're ready to install our mass airflow sensor. I removed it from our stock engine cover and it's held in place with two 2.5 millimeter hex screws. Bring your connector back. All right, well, your installation's complete. I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching the video. We had a fun time making it, so we're gonna make a bunch more. Uh, let us know what DIYs you wanna see specifically in the comments below, and we'll get to work making them. Uh, as far as this installation is concerned, if you need more help, check out the link to the PDF in the description. It's beautifully written and it's step by step. Uh, but other than that, I think, I think that does it for today, so we'll see you next time.